All right, everyone, we should be live. Let's make sure that's actually the case over on Rumble, of course. By the way, BitChute streaming will be coming soon as well. Their streaming service is now available. Uh, I have just uh, contacted Ray, and he's going to get me set up with that. So we're going to have some fun times. I'm probably going to have to upgrade my StreamYard because I kind of want to retain the Twitter streams as well. I know not as many people tune in, but, you know, just for people who mainly use Twitter to sort of make sense. Lots to talk about today. We've got the Russian election results, of course, and and claims of fraud in the election. Well, we'll be talking about that from the usual nuanced approach, because it's like, you know, of course, there's going to be election interference in Russia. You think that they have fair elections? I would just like to point out that Western firms are being a little bit hypocritical when they call that out. And yeah, they don't call out the election interference in the West. By the way, we'll be talking about that in the context of Google as well. We've got the uh, MRE dude there from Kuds News Network. Palestinian activist Ahmed Kuta exposes the contents of U.S. airdrops to the starving population of Gaza. As I explained this morning, this pisses me off on a visceral and personal level because I happen to really like MREs. And I mean, he's fucking, he got, he got the vegetable crumbles. He's still complaining. It's like, what the fuck more do you want? And we'll talk about the bloodbath story. Media bloodbath. Elon Musk is now more trustworthy than every major news outlet. Yes, backing down uh, Joe Scarborough, actually a severe TDS, number one. And Jen Psaki coming out, circling back around, back into the lie a second time to lie about having lied to the audience. Yes, we're on lieception. So we'll talk about that as well. Trump is apparently, uh, this, is, this is, you know, anonymous tipster. So, you know, we'll take it with a grain of salt. But supposedly... Paul Manafort might be back on the 24 ticket in some advisory position. I think that's a good idea. Google interfering with elections. And then, of course, the launch of the Don Lemon show. I've only seen a couple of clips from it, but he's already been fact-checked on Twitter. He's not exactly well-liked by the uh, people who run the site. I wonder why. Could it be you came out and tried to throw Twitter under the bus right as you were going to ink a lucrative deal to have an exclusive show there? Probably. Uh, you would appear to have made a mistake. By the way, shout out to my friend in New Jersey. He's suffering from some sort of lung condition and coughing up blood at the moment. And so uh, get well soon. He asked me to shout him out there. And so I decided to do so. Now we've got a lot to talk about today. Mike the Wop, oh, oh, I imagine your dirt rectangles will grow into a lush jungle, bearing many fruits of your labor. Looking forward to seeing it all come together. Clank, yes, indeed. I I, I can't really do any garden work today because it's snowing. I'm not going to go out in this weather and do that. And I'm, by the way, I'll be back in the Netherlands, uh, actually, in a little bit over a week. And coincidentally, the date that I chose to travel is right as it's going to start warming up. But this isn't a bad thing because then I can plan in all the cold weather crops before I leave and delegate, I don't know, my mom to water them or something like that, you know, just keep them moist. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to have to expedite my biochar schedule, though. I'm probably going to have to process it today. I'll probably have to go out there in my uh, in my winter jacket because it's so cold and uh, crush it up, pop it in that rowboat that's out there and then start charging it. It's going to be a fun time. I'm going to do the James Brown brown sugar shuffle all over that shit. Blood Bathory. I'm not a lie. I'm Bloodbath guitarist and car guy and weeb. Interesting. Muddy Drip 6665. Your Boeing video has inaccuracies about manufacturing. Main issue right now, excluding the door, is airlines not maintaining their planes. The UA plane mentioned that had a panel fall off is 24 years old and passed its warranty. That is a problem as well. Uh, you are correct, sir. Sass Master 531. With this new boy who cried wolf with the bloodbath overreaction, will this make the reported deportations Trump plans on easier to carry out? Ari, sob stories, etc. Uh, mass deportation is difficult because in some cases it would literally require the violation of the Fourth Amendment and uh, the right uh, against uh, unreasonable search and seizure. Um, I've spoken about this before. I'm a fan of just keeping people from illegally immigrating in the first place. Therefore, you don't need as many deportations. Musically assured destruction. If Trump is elected, how likely will the Uniparty try to claim the election was honked? 100% chance. They did that in 2016, you remember. Muddy drip again. I sent you a DM and X if you have questions regarding manufacturing since I work there and how to tell the age of planes in incidents. 
Yes, uh, I thank you for that. Uh, if you can bump that to the top, I get like, you know, 60 or 70 DMs every single day. So things get lost, even if I read them. So I would appreciate that. If you, if you want to bump that to the top, I'll uh, reread it later and uh, try to respond. It's a little bit much. It's uh, Sometimes I get a little bit overwhelmed. I'm a one-man fucking goddamn army. Scruffy0105. What's a bigger threat to Earth's liberty, the bugs or the automatons? Um, hmm. It's hard to say. I don't know. I think they're both uh, about the same. Probably the automatons, I guess. Anyway, we'll start with uh, the Russian election news. Live. West condemns Russian pseudo-election as Putin claims landslide win. Yes, you got something like uh, 88% of the vote. Level one. Vladimir Putin and the Russian Uniparty, which, which does exist there, clearly cheated. Um, you're not going to get 88% in such an election without some rigging. Mainly, you just have your opposition opponents arrested. Uh, what's happening in the United States right now? Is the sitting president of the United States attempting to have his opponent imprisoned? Yeah, it's uh, basically the same thing. And so uh, I really chuff at some Western analysis because you'll identify legitimate problems in like a foreign election or some policy that none of the country imposes, but then you're guilty of the same crime. And I can only hearken back to Trump right after he was elected. You remember that when they were talking about the evils of Russia and stuff, which I mean, Russia is doing bad things at the moment. And then he said, well, are we so uh, innocent? And <laughs> pointing out the obvious. This was taken as evidence that he was a Russian stooge or a Russian pawn or something like that. And it's just like, you know, if he had a D after his name and he said the same thing, nobody would have batted an eye. Nobody would have had a problem with it. Sort of like with Bloodbath Gate there, with the uh, legacy media, using uh, trying to twist a colloquial term into a, a deep-seated socio-political threat. If uh, Devious Don is re-elected, then he'll have his enemies jailed. When he was referring to Joe Biden, literally doing that now. If he's not elected, he'll command his followers. Legions and legions of Nazis will march on the Capitol. There will be a bloodbath everywhere. And it's just a pile of horseshit. Yeah, Russia's corrupt. Of course it is. So is Ukraine. The legacy media used to admit to this, by the way. And you look at reporting before this war broke out on the nation of Ukraine's government, and it's a stark difference. Very, very stark. So Zelensky is, is corrupt, and the Ukrainian uh, government is embezzling money and, and squandering shit and uh, doing crazy things. Uh, you don't see any such uh, posts about that anymore. It's very, very black and white. It's very, very uh, uh, one-sided, very dichotomous. Uh, the reporting that goes on from the legacy media, which is tied at this point to D.C. itself. Um, it's very football team mentality. Us versus them. Good versus bad. Black and white. Only a Sith deals in absolutes, I thought was the uh, old moniker. Well, there are some Sith Lords running D.C. right now. They also happen to run the Kremlin. They're just uh, competing factions. They disagree on what color your lightsaber is supposed to be or something like that. Of course Putin's corrupt. <laughs> is there any question about that? That doesn't mean that Zelensky's not. It doesn't mean that D.C. is any better. It doesn't mean that our elections aren't fucked with as well. It's uh, the same shit, different asshole, basically. Sebastian Monroe, this episode of Stick, Sex, and Hammer 666 is brought to you by Pumpkin Fire Crafts, Biltong USA, Wicked Needle Embroidery, Heritage Heirloom Seed Co., Webster's Wear, Jam and Bean, and from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. I will be shouting them out in a minute. My Crypto Journey, Bloodbath, in-stream media has no shame. No, they don't. Jen Psaki, especially. God, I mean, uh, again, I've got a, I covered it in the morning video, much like with the MRE story. But I'm going to cover it a fucking again in a live stream just for anyone that didn't see the morning video because it just it blows my mind. It's insane. You're literally lying about having lied to your viewers. You're covering up a lie with another gaslighting goddamn lie. It's a little bit much. Musically assured destruction. Check if your flight to Europe is a Boeing. Well, no, I believe it is an Airbus. E. Lombard. Bloodbath. Blah, blah, blah. Desperately desperate. Desperation. Good book by Stephen King, who has TDS himself. Sigil Stone, the real threat to Super Earth is the Illuminati, but the new crop of divers ain't ready for that conversation. 
Virgil Shadow, any concerns over the Great Replacement Theory? Yes, I do not want uh, my ethnic block to be replaced. I think that would be a negative thing. If I had a different skin color, then liberals would agree with me. I find this very interesting. Webster's Wares, good morning, Clankers from Endicott, Washington. Deep behind enemy lines. Free shipping using code STICKS at checkout at www.websterswares.com. Trump 24 and STICKS merch available. Make it a bloodbath. Somebody should make bloodbath into a shirt. Sigil stone, a bloodbath? What? Who the hell got a hold of my RimWorld save? And why is the media reporting on what my minigun-wielding vampire has been up to? <laughs> that pie over there. Haitian MREs taste like mud and stringy pork. What type of pigs are they chopping up for this crap? Talk about a long pig barbecue bloodbath. Yeah, barbecue for capping. Sigil stone, the illuminate, not illuminati. Oh, I thought that was a typo. I don't even know what the reference is. Probably a video game or something. By the way, we will shout out our merch partners before we go to the next, uh, the the angering MRE report. I'm pissed off on a personal level about that. We have various partners, pumpkinfirecrafts.us, where you can get bookmarks, you can get belt chains, keychains, engraved spoons, and amulets, as we're calling them, with the Sticks, Hex, and Amor logo, and Clank, and Peace Out, and all of the other various slogans you enjoy on this channel. We have BiltongUSA.com, use code STICKS, of course, or AntonsUSA.com for your delicious meat, which I'll be eating some later when I, I don't know, I have no choice but to go outside, I suppose. And uh, there's STICKS merch there as well, mugs, tumblers, and shirts. WickedNeedleEmbroidery.BigCartel.com, where you can get STICKS, HEX, and HAMMER hats, such as this one over here. Hat on a hat. I'm not a cat in a hat, I'm just a hat in a hat. I like them. Uh, HeritageHeirloomSeedCompany.com. There are not only seed survival buckets available, but now there is also soap. That comes very highly endorsed. When I go to the Netherlands, I'm going to be bringing a bar with me because it's just so fucking great. It's it's the best soap that I've ever used, in all honesty. Handmade uh, with goat's milk, actually, which is interesting. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. Apparently it exists. We have Websterswares.com, where you can get stick, sex, and hammer merch, and also Trump merch, and various other miscellaneous. And Jam and Bean, that is J-A-M-N-Bean.com, where you can get delicious coffee and tea. I also high, uh, highly recommend it. You take one smell of the uh, Costa Rican blend, and you tell me that doesn't smell goddamn delicious. There's never going to be an official Stick, Sex, and Amor coffee like that I hawk myself, but Jam and Bean, I do like coffee, and it smells fucking amazing. And they send me a bunch of stuff, and I've liked it all, so, you know. I mean, uh, probably having some of that tea later as well. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, next news story. There is a Palestinian activist, so-called Ahmed Kuda. He exposed the contents of U.S. airdrops to the starving population of Gaza. And I think this is a sympathetic page. Uh, this is Kud's News Network. From Palestine to the world, hashtag Gaza, hashtag al -Aqsa. So this is not exactly critical uh, commentary. If you wondered what's in the airdrops, now you'll see. This is torturous more than it is aid, he says. This, this is in his own words. I'm thinking to myself, there are people here, stateside, that uh, will literally pay 20 bucks for one of these meals just to review it online. I've eaten pretty much every MRE menu. Now, if he had gotten the white chicken chunks, which I think, again, was uh, menu 12, if I remember correctly, um, I don't have the full listing. It, it, it changes over time. They cancel out some meals and then they bring in new ones. If you had gotten the white chicken chunks and tried the entree, I would feel sorry for you. I would definitely expect, I, I would not have any criticism to give. But mainly, he focuses on all of the, like, the side stuff. So, like, the crackers and the jalapeno cheese spread and stuff. And he's like, well, none of this stuff is edible. Yes, it is. It's not only edible, it's pretty goddamn good. And by the way, the flameless ration heater, you're supposed to put a little bit of water in it, squish it around. Uh, I've got a, a secret methodology for making them work better, especially if they're older. I'll get to that in a second. And then then the magnesium uh, heats up and, and oxidizes and it releases hydrogen gas. And uh, then it cooks your food. You slip the entree or whatever else you want inside. There's a lot of jury rigging with MREs that goes on. Sort of like that, uh, what's it called? Uh, Steve MRE Info talked about it. I can't remember what he termed it, but apparently uh, with the older MREs, they take like the, there was a, like a pudding mix that they would have and they'd mix it with the coffee or something like that. 
and it was like army ranger pudding or something like that i can't remember exactly what he uh, called it sounds pretty good if you're into sweet stuff i myself am not but uh let me give you a tip first if you've got an older mre because like i got a case from a subscriber they're packed in 2016 so the ration burners eh, they're a little bit hit or miss flood it with water do the squish up thing and then dump the water back out Ta-da! it'll work perfectly uh just a tip for all of you out there i've done it several times now it really it's it's much better than the alternative which is that you carefully measure it in and then squish it around and there's not enough uh, liquid to actually create a, a proper reaction if you've got a d degraded magnesium you're gonna need to flood it more and then empty it out and uh, it'll take a little bit longer to heat up, but it will still heat. You'll still you'll still see the the gas coming out of it. You don't want to light a lighter next to it, by the way. That's hydrogen. <laughs> it is flammable. It's an explosive. So be careful. But anyway, uh, I, I was looking at this and I'm thinking the gall. Uh, who in Davy Jones insolence are you to uh, to denigrate the food that we're giving you for free? Again, we sent hundreds of thousands of these meals over at this point. They're actually good. You got the vegetable crumbles. You got one of, I, I would say that's probably the third or fourth best entree and you're still bitching about it. Don't even touch the entree. Yeah, I, I'm sure the crackers are a little bit brittle. The spread is a little bit artificial in nature or the, the, the peanut butter. Well, that, that's arguably better as far as shelf stability. Yeah, I mean, it's not gourmet. What do you expect? Do you want us to drop like racks of barbecue uh, ribs uh, on Gaza or something like that? And they can't even send every menu. Some of them are pork-based. So I don't think that if you send shredded pork to Gaza that it would be eaten quite as quickly. As long as they don't send the white chicken chunk entree over there, which would be a war crime, uh, I have no problem with this. And I don't understand what your issue is. Our, our, mil our military forces eat these on the reg when they're doing training and shit like that or out on patrol or something. Sometimes You don't have a mess hall there all the time. They eat MREs. They're good. They're specifically, they've been scientifically designed for decades and decades. The first sort of a, a real attempt at MREs is basically just after World War II and not nearly as sophisticated as the ones that they have now. Now, you can complain when you get, an, when you get white chicken chunks or if you get an MRE from Kazakhstan. Then you're allowed to complain. Not until then. I mean, fuck, the Spanish MRE wasn't nearly as good as I expected, but it was still edible. God, if you've got Swedish MREs, uh, you know, uh, the, the people of Gaza would think they were eating gourmet if the Swedes or the Australians were dropping MREs on them. But uh, you're just going to have to make do. And I'm really, really sorry about that. Mike the Wop. Someone made the AI create a picture of Trump in a tub with a loofah taking a bath in blood, please. Now, that would be an interesting image. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Certain death. Obama is meeting the UK Prime Minister at 10 Downing Street. I thought the US had laws against private citizens doing their own diplomacy. Well, I can always claim it's just a friendly visit. And I don't believe that that law would specifically apply to a former president anyway. They sort of remain in a diplomatic role. So we'll give him a pass on that one. Sigil Stone. Illuminate is a reference to Hell's Divers. Hell Divers 2 only has the bugs and automatons so far. The worst Illuminate isn't in 2 yet. Huh. So it's a game of some sort. Yeah, no, um, it would be a war crime if you sent the white chicken chunk menu to, to Gaza. You're going to start a cholera epidemic. They need to get rid of that. I, I really wish that the Department of Defense would see, like, my MRE commentary, and I'll do it for free. Get me in as an advisor and taste tester for these meals, because some of them knock it out of the park. They're really great. Some of them suck dick, like the white chicken chunks and a few others. Um, and, and there are some components in there that should be standard with literally every meal. Like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, there's like 10,000 birds out there. Holy goddamn shit, I wish I could show you that. The hell? There's literally got to be a thousand robins or something out there on the neighbor's lawn. It's like a bird storm. Holy shit, there's more of them. Just a sec. Uh, okay. Yeah, come on over and eat some uh, eat some bugs and shit out of the garden. It's like it's raining birds right now. It's like a uh, what's his name there? You remember the the, the birds uh, movie there, the horror movie? It looks like that by Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Holy shit! It's a cloud of them, 
Anyway, getting past that, I hope that they're still there when I'm done with the live stream. I would love to go and see that. I hope they uh, they don't attack because that's too many birds to deal with. It doesn't matter if they're small. If they break through your window, you're a, uh, you're a goner. Felipe Farias, what did you think of the Brazilian MRE? I don't think I've had a Brazilian MRE. I've had uh, all sorts of them, but I've never tried that one. Apparently, South Africa has some MREs, too. I'd like to try one. Probably has Biltong in it, actually. What the fuck, lol, what? Sigilstone is very low IQ, annoying as fuck, and a detriment to your content. I like Sigilstone. Uh, and Gazans bitching about MREs makes me wonder how put upon they really are. Maybe Israel needs to repress them harder until the complaints stop. The beatings will continue until morale improves, says Sigilstone. And a follow-up, the Birds horror movie by Alfred Hitchcock. You mean the Birds? Yeah, exactly. No, they're still there. I don't know what species that is. They look like robins, I guess. Could be... Jesus Christ, they fucking keep coming. This must be them coming, uh, I don't know, maybe north for uh, for the spring or something. There's like ten, there's a, literally a thousand of them out there. It's an entire, it's like a, an entire Air Force. It's the Vermont Air Force, I guess. I'm confused. I've seen crows gather in large numbers before. That's probably only the second time in my life I've seen that many birds in one place, and this might take the cake. They're like blackening the ground simply by existing. Sort of distracted me from the news. God, I wish I could get a shot of that. Joshua Oliver. Talk to Tim Poole. Oh, yo, now, now they're on our lawn. Holy goddamn Christ. What are you? Here, just a sec. I'm going to try to identify the species really quick. Just, just give me a sec. What are you? Oh, holy fucking hell. Holy shit. What are you? I don't even know. There's got to be two or three thousand of them out there. Little brown and black birds, like the size of a robin. They're not robins, though. They're something else. I don't know. <laughs> I've lost it, officially. I've lost the plot. I've been distracted from the news. Anyway, with regards to MREs, uh, US MREs are not the best, but they're pretty good. If you get the peanut butter and the crackers or the jalapeno spread or something, but there are some components they must start including in every MRE, and I would advise them of this. The little spice packets with the crushed red pepper, that's good. It gives it just enough zing, and you know you can put a little bit in, or you can put the whole thing in. The crushed red pepper is good. I mean, it's just crushed red pepper. The little herbal packets that you occasionally find in them, which I've got one in there, and I want to put it on display in a goddamn museum because it's just so great. I've only had it a couple times before, including with the, uh, I think of the ratatouille. Oh, God, it was great. Those should be in every pack. Or a little Tabasco jar. They should rotate it. You know, soldiers in the field, they can trade amongst themselves. Coffee is no longer included in some U.S. MREs. It should be required in every single one, and it should always be instant type two. And uh, they should also make sure, always have a spread that's not fruity and sweet. Jam, the jam in the MREs is often very okay. But you're going to get a little bit more protein with a cheese spread or with peanut butter now, aren't you? Otherwise, I've got no complaints except for a couple of the entrees are really subpar. The white chicken chunks need to be eliminated and bring back the vegetarian lasagna. Those are my mild proposals for how to uh, increase troop morale. Mr. Bird, the takeover has begun. Squawk. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's literally two or three thousand of them out there. They sort of went by. It was like a, literally a bird cloud. Fairfrozen55, stole us, send you a gift of bird sticks. Yes, it's an auspicious day. Actually, I did have extremely good news yesterday regarding uh, one of the new tech sites that I'm on. I will say no more. It's a secret. Uh, Mike the Wop, European starlings may be outside your window. I'll look it up later. I'll try to figure it out. That pie over there. The birds are in the walls. Let them out. Let them out. Endless vertigo. Birds aren't real. Government operation to take out sticks. Yeah, maybe they're uh, all automatons. They're just drones that look like birds. It's sort of like the Institute crows in Fallout 4. Wolf on the plane. Sounds like starlings. They group up like that. Let me look it up. Are they starlings? Yep, those were starlings. Uh, yeah, several thousand of them. <laughs> the only other bird that I've ever seen group in, in large enough numbers to make like a 
but it will cloud it would be crows i saw that once in lebanon new hampshire at uh, the restaurant i think it was at mcdonald's at the, or wendy's or something and off in the distance a couple of blocks away there was just this huge swarm of crows and you could hear them from that distance and i was uh i was flabbergasted fire down below with time traveler baron how does someone travel for, through time but starts in that time as a baby was he able to just transmit his consciousness I believe so, my friend. I believe so. Joe, Sticks, you can't identify birds by asking, what are you? You are inside and they cannot hear you. Also, they can't understand English or even speak. Well, they speak in bird. Squawk, squawk. D7 Origin, you could say that the birds were uh, robbing your attention. Yeah, that was one of the stranger things that I've seen uh, recently. Liz's Big Black Bull, did they catch the drug dealer that assaulted you? <laughs> I get the reference. Yeah, we'll say no more about that. You have to pay me more if you want a response to that sort of thing. Virgil's shadow. Will a Trump election help drop prices or just stabilize them? Originally, just stabilize. Uh, you could have a deflationary period or something like that. It, uh, it remains to be seen. We're hoping that his economic magic wand that Obama claimed he didn't have works again. Uh, he, he's going to need one hell of a spell, though, there. So he's going to need Stola's help. Chuck Brinker. Chicken chunks are better than the maple sausage. Facts. If it's worse than the white chicken chunks, then I ain't trying it. I'd, I'd, rather, uh, I'd rather eat poop or something like that. That was literally one of the worst things I've ever eaten in my life. It made absolutely no sense. The MRE, from top to bottom, made no goddamn sense. How can they make MREs that are so great, like the beef stew, the vegetable crumbles, which that moron from Gaza didn't like, uh, certainly the veggie lasagna, and you, how can you make uh, such really good food in some cases? Uh, but then you make something that's literally an abomination. There's no way that it possibly passed through taste testing. They must have rushed the menu or something. Johnny Bravo, with China and Mexico partnering up for car manufacturing, do you think Mexico will be the next superpower? <laughs> no. <laughs> they will gain wealth. F. Hein, Fruits of Eden, hardcover when? I still have to re-edit that work. Right now, I'm focused on trying to, uh, well, my illustrator did message me about a week, oh, there's the birds again, about a week ago. It's uh, like the Isengard crows or some shit like that out there. It's fascinating. Man, times that I wish I had a second camera here. Again, there are probably 2,000 of them out there. It is a cloud of birds. And it is flying around randomly. They're not even, like, eating or anything like that. They're just having fun, I guess. It's a whole squadron. It's a whole air force. Squad after squad after squad of starlings. I got distracted again. I'm sorry, but, you know, when I see that out my window, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But, uh, no, right now uh, I've got uh, eight edited works that are pending illustration. I'm working on a ninth, and then I want to do one more for the year. I want to have ten edited works for the year. Once those are all illustrated and up and stuff, probably by summer or so, uh, I will be working on expanding and re-editing Fruits of Eden and making both a new soft cover and a hard cover, because that was one of my favorite works. It's the first major work that I did. Crew Kid 52 Hey, Sticks, have you ever read The Devil's Chessboard by David Talbot? It's a history of how Alan Dulles created the deep state in his own image. No, I haven't, actually. Essential Liberty, breakfast omelet was the worst one. Like an old moldy sponge. Morning, clankers. Ammo at mtpu.com. 10% off code sticks. By the way, please do message me later. We can talk about uh, potential deals and so forth. That's probably about as many merch sponsors as I can have. Dan Boy D5. Sticks, I hope all the candles we sent you arrive through the army of bird. If clankers want to get some for themselves with a nice discount, go to www.thunderrivercandles.com and use code BIRDCLOUD. By the way, I did get them. They smell amazing, and I'm just waiting. Uh, one more subscriber wants to send something to me, and then I'm going to do another shout-out video. But it's going to be uh, pretty good. Brain Biscuit. Shout-out to Sigil for attempting to let down his new admirer and chat gently. A real heartbreaker, that guy. Sigilstone, hey, well, everyone's heard about the bird, b -b -b bird, bird's the word, uh, b -b -b bird, 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 b -b -b bird's the word. Y you get it. I get the reference. Don't make me go Peter Griffin on your ass. BW, did you see the new Dune? The first part kind of is woke BS and blows, but the second part makes up for it with cool action scenes. I watched it in the theater with the moving seat. Awesome. No, I haven't. Saw the original Dune back when I was a kid, haven't seen it since, and don't really remember much about it, actually. How much, King Cuck? I'm getting a YouTube channel up. 
make it about 350 or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to embezzle you. Chuck Brinker, I'm guessing you didn't have the chunks with the hotter barbecue sauce. Chili with beans is the best I've had so far. The chili with beans is good. Uh, no, it, it did come with a sauce, but the sauce sucked. It was, uh, I mean, it had a little bit of heat to it, but it had this overwhelmingly sour flavor, and the chicken wasn't seasoned at all. You'd be better off doing like a sweet sauce with it. I'm sure any soldier that gets that in the field, like if he eats the chicken at all, he's trading straight across for something else to put on the fucking chicken, and the hot sauce just sort of gets thrown in the dirt or something like that. Use the chili lime. The chili lime sauce should also be in most MREs. That's pretty good. Anyway... Bloodbath. The uh, media has lied and then somehow doubled down today. Joe Scarborough getting shot down by Elon Musk uh, by fact-checking, uh, actually, and taking his tweet down, claiming that Donald Trump promised a bloodbath if he was not re-elected. Yeah, he did, uh, in the automotive industry. I don't think that he's referring to people getting run over by vehicles. I think he's referring to an economic crisis. Uh, it's fairly evident. It's a colloquial usage. I've used the term bloodbath or massacre or something like that in an economic context before. Stocks fell by 15% today, locking down NASDAQ or something. Well, it was a bloodbath. People lost billions of dollars. It was a bloodbath. But we're not talking about stock traders killing each other. We're talking about the stocks getting killed. The fact is that no reasonable person looking at what Trump said in context would conceive of it as being a violent insinuation of any kind which is why they took it out of context and reposted the edited clip over and over. And it came originally in part from the Biden-Harris HQ page on Twitter. Scarborough rep uh, recreating that, getting shot down by Elon Musk explicitly. MSNBC ran with it. Well, Donald Trump is threatening to kill people if he's not reelected. He's saying his fans are going to massacre you because we're all violent, terrible, deranged individuals, of course, with exceptionally violent. That's why uh, the only person that died on J6 was... Uh, couple of protesters and literally nobody else. Very, very violent, very horrific, terrible. You know, five foot two protester gets shot in the chest. And there's a, you know, a big problem. But uh, we still, by the way, we still don't know who planted the pipe bombs there. Can you say that it was an inside job? I think that we can safely say so. Otherwise, I think they would have gotten to the bottom of it. Uh, anyway, um, the, so, the, so they reposted it. Uh, they, I mean, they posted it on the legacy media, claiming that Trump was threatening a bloodbath, threatening to have his supporters massacre people, basically, and which was wrong. MSNBC comes out later, and instead of fact-checking itself and saying, well, we're sorry that we got the edited clip, and they could have thrown a staffer under the bus with plausible deniability, and their gullible audience would have largely believed it. A staffer gave us this video. It was breaking news. We didn't do our due diligence. We're apologetic for that. We do retract. Here's the, the original, you know, quote in context. We're sorry. And we fired somebody for it. We threw some low-wage worker under the bus, which is what big corporations in uh, such a position tend to do. Nope. Jen Psaki found a way to circle back around, claiming that it actually wasn't a lie at all. We didn't lie to you. Trump may have been talking about the automotive industry, but clearly the insinuation was a real, genuine bloodbath. Well, I mean, I'm not seeing that in the context at all. You have to have Trump derangement syndrome to believe that. People with Trump derangement said, by the way, I don't even know what they're trying to accomplish because people with TDS that bad already believe that Donald Trump and his fans are violent ignoramuses and shit like that. And people that don't have TDS aren't going to believe it because they're going to see the original clip. I don't even understand the point of the propaganda. Sort of like the Biden administration centrally concocted the idea, which makes sense since they coordinate with all of these legacy media outlets. Fuzzy Wanderer. British intelligence fabricated the Steele dossier. The Clinton campaign paid for it. Now Obama is meeting with the same unipartyist supporting Brits. Shenanigans. The uniparty isn't even hiding it. I don't really care if he uh, visits with the Brits. What the fuck, lol, what? How much would I need to give you to ban Sigil Stone and his alts? Nobody likes his bullshit, especially when you spend 20 minutes reading his nonsense. Probably a... I don't know if I can use that word, a, a transvestite uh, with all the personalities. I, I can say that on a YouTube live stream. Uh, I don't really ban people from the channel. I do appreciate your donations, but I really am averse to that. And, you know, I like reading the super chats. BW, can we stop calling them the media and just call them Democrat propagandists? Well, I call them legacy media. 
FTL Ralph, say Trump wins 2020, honk. His admin continues, 2022 midterms could come and go, etc. It's now 24. Who would Trump be endorsing? What is the Dem field? Ah, uh, that's hard to say. It could be DeSantis, actually. It could be Yunkin. Uh, they're both on the short list for 28 candidates, by the way. Could be someone like Gabbard or Noam. Uh, basically, a, a laundry list of the people that are associated with Trump being fomented as running mates or have done well at the gubernatorial level, I think. Ted Cruz could be on there. I wouldn't enjoy that, but it's possible. Yeah. Uh, what would the Dem field be? I don't know. Biden certainly wouldn't run again. Hillary isn't going to run again. She's made that clear. It's actually kind of hard to figure out who the Dems are going to run in 28. They've got a birth of, uh, of people that they can field, but none of them are really qualified. Sigil Stone, if he gives you another 50 because of me, I'm going to need a revenue sharing agreement. <laughs> I'm good. If he pays enough, Sigil, I don't know. Maybe I'll ban you. I'm just joking. I'm not going to do that. Ronan 361. There was a legal decision a few years ago where Team Maddow had to admit in court they were entertainment. Could Trump destroy legacy media outlets by legally labeling them entertainment? Wouldn't destroy them. They'd still be ignoramuses who take them seriously. Mr. Bird, do you have an opinion on the greasers, their cars, and the 50s as a whole? I like the era. I think it's fun. And uh, greaser style's pretty cool. You know, Corn Pop was a bad dude. He got on that fucking diving board, and Joe had to put him in his place. That was back in the 50s, I think. Somewhere around 57 or so. Showing Joe's age. Johnny Bravo. Hey, Sticks, big fan since 2015. What are your thoughts on Lana Trump taking over the RNC? Well, she's co-chair. She's, she's not in singular control. I think it's good. While I don't like nepotism in politics, she is qualified. Um, she's not a direct blood relative of Trump. Of course, she's married to Eric Trump, so it's not quite as nepotistic kind of, sort of. And uh, it will help the RNC. One of her first decisions, what is it? Hire Scott Pressler. Well, that's an improvement. The RNC may actually be aiming to win an election, which is why you know that dedicated neocons are not the ones that are controlling it. Harrison Bergeron. The media that is supposed to report on the government is licensed by the same government. Exactly. It's a problem. Trump eyeing Paul Manafort for his 2024 campaign. This is according to reports. So take it with a grain of salt. I'll weigh in on my thoughts. I think that it would be a good idea to have Paul Manafort back in the campaign. It would outrage the liberals. They would scream bloody murder about Russia, and it would allow people like myself to fact check them and say most of the problems that were had with Manafort had to do with the Bush administration era. It was in the 2000s or early 2010s. It was long before the 2016 election. The only contemporary problem that he had was lying about the former problems that he had before he was on the Trump campaign. Paul Manafort never fomented anything with the Russians that didn't involve apparently bilking a Russian investor out of a significant amount of money by providing bogus polls. Well, that's not exactly working for the Kremlin. If anything, he stabbed them in the back. He did work with the Ukrainians, though. He worked with the Turks, who are a member of NATO. He did so improperly. He did break the law. He ended up having to be pardoned for it. I mean, he, he did commit a crime. But it's not the crime that everyone associates him with. He did not help the Kremlin to control the Trump White House or any ominous bullshit like that. It never happened. Liz's big black bull, I sent like send, uh, 10 super chats, so 3.30, right? Cock, cock. Yeah, I mean, keep sending the money, my dude. I don't mind. I'll take money from anyone, as long as you're not telling me to say something that's going to get me banned or something like that, or something that's outright defamation or threatening a fellow subscriber or something. Let's see. Brain Biscuit, how much do I need to donate to get you to do an entire stream reading Sigil versus Bonehead fan fiction, and how much to make it erotic fan fiction? Depending on where you go with the eroticism, I mean, you'd have to pay me a lot, a few hundred at least. Uh, I may or may not be able to read that out, though, on a site like YouTube. Rumble wouldn't have a problem with it. BitChute wouldn't. Twitter wouldn't. Uh, I guess it depends on the erotica. If you veer off way into La La Land with the fetishism, I wouldn't be able to read it out. I'd have to slow read that shit. I'd be like books on tape, I suppose. BW. I bet it would be Joe Manchin so they could try to get the people they lost with the left-wingers back on board again if they lose to Trump this year. No, I don't think that it's going to be Manchin. It'd be really, really hard for him to uh, to run. He would have uh, sold out anyway. Clearly, he was uh, getting towards the end of his career, and he said, fuck it. That's basically what he did. 
We have a report that uh, Google has interfered with uh, elections, that is in the United States, 41 times over the last 16 years. This is according to the Media Research Center. Now, keep in mind, this is a conservative think tank. So, you know, they might embellish a little bit. Uh, one of the things that they uh, mentioned, though, uh, I'll read this verbatim. Other examples cited by the R uh, MRC include disabling Tulsi Gabbard's ads account just as she became the most searched candidate following the first Democratic primary debate in 2020. That was definitely mysterious, by the way. Suppressing news critical of Biden, they, they do that explicitly. Concealing most Republican campaign websites for the 12 competitive Senate races in 22, and aiding Biden in 24 by burying in its search results the campaign websites of every one of his significant opponents. They have indeed done so. I would also point something out as a personal experience. I use Gmail. Uh, I probably shouldn't, but I do for convenience sake, and it's tied to my Google account and shit like that. You know, I've got Blogspot and YouTube. Um, why is it that everything from Trump ends up in the spam folder despite me explicitly signing up, and why am I seeing ads for Biden and shit like that or for fucking uh, what's-her-name there? The, the chick that just dropped out. I literally can't remember her name because she's so goddamn irrelevant. Or RFK Jr. and stuff like that. It goes straight to the inbox. I never signed up for those alerts. I get shit from the RNC on a constant basis. I uh, never see anything from Trump that's uh, that I don't have to manually search for in the spam folder. Yeah, Nikki Haley. That's who I was thinking of. I don't know. I had a Biden moment there. It's not anything big because, you know, she literally was irrelevant the whole time. So it doesn't really matter. The Nerdwire, the deep state would prefer to radicalize some vulnerable, mentally ill leftoid, make them believe Trump is Hitler, and they will be doing a great service to our nation and world by offing him. That is probably their next plan. They've already fled the battlefield <clears throat> for the primaries. They know that Trump will be the nominee. The lawfare is beginning to break down. We'll see what happens with that. If, if uh, the ballot printers don't save it for them, they probably will try to go crazy and take a shot. Yeah, I would use Proton Mail, but when I uh, signed up for Proton Mail, it uh, it locked me out, and there was no way back in, so I canceled the service. And I'm like, "Fuck this shit! They can't starve you." I am not convinced there will be elections this year, and there will be chaos. Even if there is, and Trump wins, there will be chaos. I do truly hope I am wrong on both points. However, oh, there will be chaos. It doesn't matter what happens. There will be elections, though. It's just a matter of whether they're uh, capable of stealing the election again. Mike the Wop. Message to all clankers, carrying without one in the pipe is like driving around with no seatbelt on, thinking you'll put it on just before the accident. Proper training and a reliable tool can cure this. Again, I happen to have a difference of views from you on firearms and having a round chambered at all times. I like safety. You know, it's a good thing. Again, I mean, if I have to deploy my firearm, it's much more likely that a rabid wolf is, I mean, a rabid coyote is staggering across the property than that somebody's physically attacking me, so. Then we've got our final news story. The Don Lemon Show, episode one on Elon Musk. A big, long stink piece, basically. Yes, Don Lemon posting this on Twitter. Lots of people viewed the post. Not so many people interacting with it, and he's Pretty close to being ratioed. Link in the description. Oh, also, a link at the top. If you're watching on YouTube to my books blog, it's been pinned. And in the description, cross-platform. Go and get some books. They're fun. I've edited hundreds of them. They're on various topics, mostly related to human spiritual systems. Uh, he gets fact-checked. He's almost ratioed on the post. Literally nobody gives a damn about it. Elon Musk the other day basically cuffed him and threw him to the ground. Uh, Timestamps. News on X. So rambling about the Twitter platform. Donald Trump and endorsing a candidate. Ooh, big, big story, my God. The new Tesla Roadster. Well, that's an interesting. A uh, new uh, overpriced EV. The one thing that Elon Musk is doing wrong. He should uh, busy himself with putting up satellites, going to Mars, and uh, uh, freeing up more free speech and get rid of the EV crap. I guess he does that for his DEI portfolio so he can actually get investment from the government relaxation and video games tweeting and drug use <laughs> they're definitely correlated you know you, you smoke a little bit of weed and you go on your shit post and then you deliberately cause problems just so you can laugh at people's retarded reactions the great replacement theory content moderation diversity equity and inclusion trans rights and the woke mind virus and advertisers on x 
Sounds real heavy hitting. So a bunch of uh, topics that literally all of us independent content creators have already pretty much covered into the goddamn ground, especially the DEI and things like that. Yes, I'm sure that something, yeah, isn't he like 50 something? Don Lemon can fresh from the legacy media who had a brief redemption arc and it looked like he'd get his shit together and he'd become a major name on Twitter. So he would throw the old establishment under the bus and have like a really great sort of a podcast sort of thing going on. And he had that opportunity. Spice it up, be non-boring, do something new, and say, fuck the establishment. Oh, he would have made a shit ton of money. The redemption arc alone would have kept people's interest for more than his due 15 minutes of fame. He would have made, a hand over fist, he would have been making goddamn money. Instead, what does he do? According to Elon Musk and from the clips of his show, it appears that's correct. He basically makes his CNN slot, but he just says he wants to put it on Twitter. Now he's not even getting the support of Twitter itself, and so it's completely falling flat. Probably deserves it. Uh, let's see. Uh, BW, that's not the only thing that Elon's done wrong. He put the remove people for misgendering rule back. He has partially reversed that, and he has stepped in physically uh, to prevent that from happening. Sigilstone, watch Wizards with Guns on YouTube. One of their comedy bits is a home shopping channel for terrible magic items from D&D, &D, and it's like Chekhov's gun that casts four shadows and is loaded. Interesting. Please send no more uh, 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 rants or uh, super chats, by the way. I do have to go offline. I should probably process the charcoal. I should probably, well, I've got to cook a sauce for the pizza tomorrow, actually, too, preemptively, so... Got a few things to do actually this afternoon. David Hunter, Sticks, have you ever tried DMT? How'd it go? If so, I did brew ayahuasca once. This was many years ago. It's beyond the statute of limitations, so don't FBI me, bro. Uh, yeah, I made ayahuasca and it didn't work very well. They call it La Purga, it's the purge. Uh, I can see why because it's so nauseating that you very quickly become vomitous. You have to keep it down long enough to absorb enough of the potentiated DMT uh, in order to actually get high, and I failed to do that. It was just completely nauseating. As far as crystalline DMT, the kind that you can smoke, I never encountered it. I did like salvia divinorum, though. I used that, and I, I think the uh, reports are roughly similar on that. When people say DMT is, is cleaner, but I liked salvia. Ramon C. GTC, a cool stream of you farming like Bob Ross. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be fun. I could do an outdoor live stream where I'm just mauling up the soil or operating a rototiller or something. I like making one-off garden videos, though, more, I think. It's relaxing to me. I don't really like to mix electronics and human communication with my leisure activities that are outdoors. Like when I, I mean, I've got my phone with me, and sometimes I take pictures of mushrooms or something. But if somebody calls me when I'm walking out in the woods feeling the gentle breeze, I'm going to be pissed at them, actually. It had best be a goddamn emergency, because otherwise I'm going to lash out at that person and say, like, what the fuck are you doing? You knew that I was relaxing myself and getting away from the digital bullshit for a while, pretending that it was the 1990s, back when you could go out without a phone and stuff like that. And then you just, you broke my heart. <laughs> you broke the illusion. Now I will be sad for the rest of the day. No, I, uh, I, enjoy, um, I enjoy being in nature. I don't really like mixing electronics with it. I know that my, it's literally my job relies upon being on the internet. My job relies upon computers and keyboards and, and webcams and shit like that. But when I am taking a break, I really like to get completely away from that shit. I think the FedEx truck is coming. So that's an opportunity to say goodbye to everyone. I'm going to go offline now. I thank you to the nearly 5,000 people that tuned in live. Thank you for listening to my MRE rant about the white chicken chunks. Again, it's a war crime if those are being included in the Gazan food supply. Uh, so please uh, do not do that, Joe. You know, torture is bad. I will be back tomorrow with more news. Hopefully it's a little bit easier to compile, actually. It took me about an hour today to find enough things that were actually newsworthy to talk about. So, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with more fun. Maybe I'll eat an MRE on the live stream sometime. That would be fun as well. That's about all.